Okay, it's 24 hours later and I know a lot more about how this works now. Um, I did drain out all the oil overnight. I let it drip and uh, there was a very slight amount of water contamination in the oil. But more importantly, what I learned is that the way this system works, there's actually a pump inside here and it works on basically it's hydraulics. So there is a servo in there, but the servo has to do with controlling the hydraulic flow. The default position for the system is actually in the forward gear. So it actually wasn't abnormal at all for this to be basically in forward. Um, one of the two wires that goes to the solenoid has to have 12 volts on it and the motor has to be running for it to be in neutral because what happens is the motor running actually uh, turns your hydraulic pump and develops your, your pressure and then the 12 volts on that one lead uh, apparently shifts the valve body into some configuration to give you neutral and then if you lose that 12 volt signal which is what basically I had going when I had it running the other day because I had nothing hooked up to it um, it defaults to the forward position and then if you apply 12 volts to both of the wires at the same time that's actually supposed to give you reverse so that's kind of how it works so to sum up I may have had absolutely nothing wrong with this but that being said I do want to change the oil and the other thing I learned about it is that the oil that they used in this particular um, hydro shift electric shifting um, outdrive is very specific. Uh, the manual states um, from what I read online that it should be type C um, oil and apparently type C oil has been phased out so from what I read on various forums apparently OMC premium outdrive oil is what is recommended and there are some theories as to why regular oil won't work one of the theories is that it's too heavy that the uh, the oil that goes in this that's supposed to go in this unit is lighter uh, the other theory is that uh, there's actually some conductivity that the oil has that that the oil that's supposed to go in here is not supposed to have any conductivity so it can't short things out I'm not sure whether or not that's true or not but I do know that everybody warns do not use the wrong oil in this unit so since I did drain it down I am going to have to find the uh, correct oil for this but in the meantime I still want to drop the outdrive because I definitely do have a problem with water circulation not happening here so I think as I was looking at it yesterday I think I decided that it's going to be these two bolts right here which are 9 sixteenths and the two bolts like it on the other side that are 9 sixteenths and then this one 5 8 inch bolt up in the bottom here and I think that's going to drop the stick. Well I loosened all these without taking them all the way out because I want to see if this will start to drop down so I also don't want it to just fall right off because I expect there to be wires that go down to this unit from up above and there's probably going to be some sort of a watertight connecting connection on there I would assume so that when water's in this cooling tower it doesn't get you know, short the wires out but I loosen up these four bolts here two on this side two on the other side and I loosen up the really big one underneath here and this is separating I can see it starting to separate here but something's still holding it back here so I'm not sure there's this big plug right here that looks like it can be removed and it's got a big Allen head set screw or whatever in the middle there almost looks like you could take this out and then take this cover off and then maybe there's another bolt hiding underneath there so I'm not sure but I'll try that next all right here's the big Allen head screw I had to take out this thing apparently is called a trim tab and uh, it's still not coming out, but it looks like it's actually being held in partially by these screw heads that are overlapping it. And I guess those screw heads would only exist if you had this big auxiliary fin on like I do. So I'm going to have to remove these two rear ones here to get this to drop out or at least loosen them. 
well, I don't know if you can see it, but way up in there, that's where that hidden bolt is. It's up, up here. Yeah, now that I took that bolt out, you can see the gap opening up on this side too, so now it's getting ready to release. Well, looks like I got all the bolts out. This is the last one I've got here. I've loosened it quite a bit. And it's not coming out. It's not gonna just fall right out if I take this bolt out, but I'm gonna have to pull on it. And then when it does finally break free, it's gonna wanna drop down and this is gonna be heavy enough that I'm gonna have to control that falling force or else I run the risk of possibly ripping those wires that I was concerned about right out. You can see there's all, a lot of crud in there already. So I might be just dealing, be dealing with a blockage in one of the passages or one of the, the pipes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find something I can put underneath here so that when this drops down, it uh, it doesn't just want to fall right to the ground. All right, just took the last bolt out and it dropped down and it's not hitting the top of my, I'm going to use this old broken tank as a soft landing for it. So now I'm going to put the camera down and give it a wiggle and see if I can't get it to drop out. I can already see the top of the water pump housing right here. All right, something's wrong because it clearly feels like what's holding it up now is the drive shaft. You get a shaft that goes right down through the top of the propeller here, goes down into the gear case, and that shaft goes up and engages the bottom of the power head. And on my last model, that I worked on, basically that just pulls right out of a splined hole. So I'm not sure why this one's not coming out. Oh, it turns out I just had to give it a little bit more wiggling and pulling and it dropped out. Uh, what I see is what looks like a ton of insect larvae and disgusting stuff just completely all inside here. Uh, this O-ring that's on the shaft right here, that O-ring is trashed. Um, I'm not sure what this material is. It's disgusting, whatever it is. And the cable, I started to pull on the cable and it started to pull the cable out right up here where I have it disconnected. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a string on there. I'm gonna pull the cable right out and uh, the string will chase it. And then that way I'll use the string to snake the cable back in when I'm done. Well, at least that's the theory. Maybe I'll have to take this cover off to make things easier. I'm going to take this cover off to give me better access to that cable harness. I think I can probably see it right through here. And these are Phillips head screws and you get very little clearance. Even a short stubby screwdriver is kind of difficult to get in. So I'm just using a um, quarter inch bit with a quarter inch socket on a small ratchet. And that's working fine. I guess I spoke too soon. Two screws on the other side came right out. This screw snapped and this screw is stripping. So it's going to come down to one of those situations where one last screw is holding me. Well, I've turned the motor all the way that way and hopefully I get enough clearance in here to get my impact driver in there and break that free. Oh, good news is I got room for the impact driver. Impact driver alone is not doing it, so I'm going to give it a little heat. Well, that didn't do much. I'm gonna give it some PB Blaster and let it sit. Well, PB Blaster didn't do it, then even a lot more heat was needed, and then uh, banging on it, banging on it here where it screws in, banging on it, finally got it loose. Still didn't come out easy, and you can just see the powder corrosion coming out with the screw. Uh, I'm having trouble getting this piece off in the front can't really see anything else holding it but then I figured I'd take the back off and I'm like well what's holding the back here and then I look inside here and if I look down in here I can see there's a screw there and there's a screw there so if I get those two screws out I can drop this whole back piece off already a bunch of stuff's falling out of there crap oh this one came out this one doesn't want to it's gonna strip on me so I'm gonna have to put some heat to it well that heat got the screw out for me and then I pulled this off, just the, the stuff that fell out. I mean, it's just disgusting. It's all, all of that mouse crap and everything that I had been working the, so hard to try and vac out down in there and I couldn't get to a lot of it. A lot of it had just collected down inside there. Now the screws up in the top front here too for this front piece, but I actually don't need to take this off now because now that I have this back piece off, I was able to clean in there and I can see that the 
wires go through a hole in the case right here and they go into the upper gear case or this. Once I removed the heat shrink tubing with uh, the rubber coverings and disconnected these quick disconnects right here, I was able to easily fit it through that. Battery's dying so I'll talk fast. This is a pipe guide, goes over one of the pipes and uh, helps you uh, get the pipe to line up and go into the holes when you're putting the drive up. There's supposed to be two of them, a short one and a long one. This is, this is the only one that appeared to be in there. So maybe they lost one when they had this apart at some point. I'm going to vac this out to clean it out. If I need to grab him, I'll grab him. <laughs> you are, you, you need to grab else. him, we'll run. <laughs> My stair pole broke over the weekend. Oh, you want to See, I told you that. I said, oh, she'll probably have one of those things with a loop on it. You can. I, I do. I think I have another one in there. I've got a lasso. Will that help? Gone, right? This is off the bridge, huh? Hey. Guess she, uh, Oh, you are good. Jesus. He did? You catch it? Yeah. You'll smell him in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you smell him yet? No. Not yet, no. I'll just let him sit here for a minute. Does he maybe not have full power because he's sick? No, he has full power. Oh. And it aerosolizes, so do you smell it yet? Nope. Oh, you will. <laughs> huh. Maybe it's me. Okay, I'm going to take apart this uh, water pump housing. First is this uh, weird gasket looking... Well, actually, first is this O-ring. What's left of an O-ring on top here. Comes off. And then there's this nasty gasket looking thing comes off what's left of that it's pretty nasty ah, now this is a uh, guide to help guide the tube into position when you're reassembling it and should be on the grommet on the bottom of that tube that actually goes in here and helps this seal. And now, should be able to take this cap screw, this one off. This was just popped into here to this little fork. So I should be able to bend this down. There we go. That gets this out of the way. And I'm going to take these four cap screws out. Well, the first one came out. Next one snapped off. Oh, joy. All right. So now let's see if this comes off. Okay, so as I lift straight up, the impeller is coming off with it. And the impeller keys onto this little Woodruff key right here. So you want to make sure you don't have that fall out and get lost. In fact, I'm going to put the camera down to make sure I don't drop it down that hole. So there's that little Woodruff key and you can imagine that falls down. Well, actually that plate right there, that plate comes right up. So I don't know if it fell down behind there. Probably wouldn't make much of a deal. So this, should, this plate should be able to come Yeah, This plate comes right back up like this. Okay, so I'll get to that in a minute. First, I'm going to take the cover and the impeller all the way off. Okay, now this plate just lifts right off of here. That exposes this bearing cap, which um, down inside there, there's the seals. 